Good afternoon, Paul. It's Friday, the 28th of July. Here's a heads up brief for today. For the Southeast Asia production, we covered 23 issues. In North Asia, we covered nine. And for Australasia and the Pacific Island, we covered seven. In South Asia, we covered 23 issues, plus the major issues in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Yeah, brilliant. Great. Welcome back, Uday. Hope your travels went well and you were successful. Go ahead. Thanks, Paul. So in Thailand, the House Speaker announced that Parliament will convene on the 4th of August to possibly vote for the Prime Minister. However, he said that the vote will depend on the outcome of the Constitutional Court ruling on the 3rd of August. On the 3rd of August, the Constitutional Court will rule on whether to accept the case against PETA of the Move Forward Party. Yes, and look, I mean, I think we can probably assume that there's going to be another vote a week or so after that. I think there's a lot of skullduggery going on at the moment. Obviously, the, uh, the the chiefs of the feudal system will be away working out their next move to pretend there's a functioning democracy there. I think we need to be really aware of these demonstrations that occur in, um, depending on what Putai does and what Taxa does and how they're all playing this game with the leaders of the feudal system. This could get very interesting, could escalate fairly quickly from a social paradigm perspective, okay? Yeah, we'll keep a close eye on that. And um, the Lao and Thai military personnel uh, have increased security in the border area along the Mekong River. This is to combat the increasing flow of drugs in the region, especially since the civil war in Myanmar. Yes, look, that whole area, Shan State, and, and controlled by the Wa, and of course, the special economic zone up in Lao, which is really a de facto Chinese crime gang and the legitimacy of the Lao government, that area is a real mess. Ironically, the only ones that are trying to clean, clean it up with any real effectiveness, let's face it, the Thai and the military are, are whistling Dixie because they can only touch the water area. The Wah have been more serious about, even, even though they're still, like most things, American, um, about 30 years behind what's actually occurring. Um, the Americans still have the wild listed as narcos, but they're the ones that are actually making more inroads than any of these half-witted public relations announcements about clean, cleaning up border areas. Thank you. Great. And in Papua New Guinea, uh, Papua New Guinea Air and Air New Guinea both cancelled all local flights from midnight yesterday until further notice. Uh, this is due to fuel restrictions imposed by Puma Energy, the country's main fuel importer, over the lack of foreign currency. I mean, this is a classic because this particular issue must be what over a year now that this has been an issue. Um, again, if you have security issues and you have governance issues and you have FX issues, it all leads to the top and you can pretend you're running a country but if you're actually running a private money-making venture, then the plane shark meet. And that's the real issue. An ineffective prime minister, a government that's only government by, by public viewing, but behind the scenes, there's not much capability there. The police are left to patch it all up and the FX reserve issues like most things in Port Moresby aren't governed well because they're done through the eyes of a, a tribal leader that favouring his own tribe rather than a member of the government as a leader trying to lead for everyone in his country. Um, his PR team's impressive. His capability is somewhat delusional and sad, sad for a country that really does need some leadership. Go, go ahead. Great. In South Asia and Pakistan, four state-owned companies will join together for a greenfield refinery project at the Gwadar port in Balochistan province. Authorities have not released more details of the project at the moment, but we'll send them over to you when it is ready. Yeah, look, I'm hanging on those. I really need to see the companies and the ownerships behind those companies if we can, okay? Yeah, sure, we'll send that over. And in India, Clashes in Manipur continue as tensions rise in the wider Northeast. Armed groups clashed yesterday in several districts in Manipur yesterday. And as of now, the official death toll is 131 dead, 
and 60,000 people have been displaced, but these are likely to be understated. Yeah, great. Just get Christine or one of the distribution team just to map that little area. I don't need the details of all the conflicts. I just need to see basically the region that it's confined to, okay? Yeah, sure. We'll do that. And moving over to Europe and Africa. Uh, well, in Africa, several people were injured when pro-coup protests turned violent in Niamey yesterday. Uh, this comes a day after a coup in Niger where the military took over the presidential palace. Okay, thanks. And lastly, the Polish Interior Ministry said that Poland, Lithuania, and Latvia will jointly shut their borders with Belarus if there are incidents involving the Wagner Group. Uh, there have been rising tensions since the Wagner Group has relocated to Belarus. I think this is hilarious, right? I mean, America, NATO, Europe, let's just call it the Western self-righteous blob, has been egging on for war since 2014, training Ukrainian soldiers, um, having SF training teams, um, building up the size of the Ukrainian military, setting up a you know, existential threat on the Russian border. And now Poland, Lithuania and Latvia think that you can close a border. Well, they might have a chance, possibly, of closing a border, but I'd be pretty sure the Wagner Group could penetrate it. Fairly sure Russia could. And, you know, all these issues that Europe and NATO, and particularly the states, are all hiding behind. They're forgetting the whole history of all these countries and how the lands shift to date of previous wars and opportunities. So it's sad to see that, you know, Eastern Europe's being destabilised by people across vast oceans that have totally different uh, agenda than those that they state. Um, anyway, ultimately East Europe and, and therefore all of Europe's going to have to eventually learn lessons that they should have learned in their several thousand years of warfare. But with a hegemonic superpower king to retain such status, it appears that they're unable to see who's pulling the strings. Um, it's, a, it's a bad indictment on the horrendous leadership in the European Union, which is a level of bureaucracy that's unwieldy and unsustainable. It has to be manipulated by somebody for it to function because there's no right, rhyme or reason. I think UK, for all the wrong reasons, made a right choice to leave the fiasco, but unfortunately they're hanging on to warfare and old allies, um, which I'm sure a thousand years from now will expose their folly. Thanks a lot. Good day. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's the brief for today, Paul. Anything else from you? No.